Well, the Wolfpack's been around for actually half a dozen years or so. It's just been such a great outlet for all of our ex Knights players. You know, there's probably about 10 of us that are in the pack. It is an exclusive group. Two Husey, Billy, Crowey. My brother Matt's phased out since he's gone into the McDonald's franchise. The Wolf Pack evolved from the boy who cried wolf. Because we always say we're going to train and we never did. And, and from there it turned into the Wolf Pack. There was a few blokes tossing up a few porkies the night before. They said, yep, I'm in. And they weren't showing up. We started to stir a few blokes up. We made a membership fee and we brought some accountability into the group. Now that's sort of grown so you don't want to miss out on a session now. Chief, give me a little thumbs up here. Visa. Chief is the old head with lots of sage advice. Kurt Gill is the youngest uh, and the fittest, and he runs the he runs the session. You set your alarm, you get up early, you come down, exercise, compulsory swim, and then a coffee and, and some laughter after. It's a it's a top way to kick the day off. It's become one of the most influential things in our day. We just had a woman bump into us up there and said, "So great to see your boys still together," and that's how I feel as well. As people finish sporting careers and go on to their work life, you know, you ask any old footballer, they tend to miss that camaraderie. We see a lot of guys struggle with that transition after life after footy, or guys lose their connection with their former teammates. So it was a really important ingredient in my life post footy. And a few of the boys have said that, you know, even you know, life gets a bit rough. We always look forward to this. So it's it's been a real beacon, I suppose, for us all. We were all pretty close, so it uh, just makes sense that we all sort of look after each other and do the right thing now. I mean, it's been 20 years plus since most of us played footy together, but the bond is as tight as it's ever been. The wolf's as strong as its pack, and the pack's as strong as its wolf, so we're sort of, we're, uh, we're always leaning on each other. You know, there's always different problems that toss up from day to day, but once you talk to the wolf pack about it uh, and, you, and your mates, um, it makes you feel better. At the end of the day, this group was formed to wrap around Husey. You know, he's the centre for us. I remember the diagnosis when it, when it came through and it rocked everyone. You know, the Wolfpack sort of started around there and um, you know, we became pretty strong and uh, reliant on a lot of people within our, our friendship group. For him to have that sort of challenge at his, that stage of his life with a young family, I, th I think he galvanised all of us together. Um, we, we really wanted to support Mark through that time of his life. And he got the pass away. Great work out of McDougall and Mark Hughes will run away and score the try. Do you still remember what it was like to be told that you had brain cancer? It's always a surreal, shattering time. You know, all hell broke loose and my life had changed forever. Um, I'd become this high grade brain cancer patient. There's no cure for brain cancer. Um, you know, brain cancer kills more people 40 and under than any other cancer. So it was a tough pill to swallow. When you go back to those early days, those initial dark days, how much did the Wolfpack and those close mates help you through that? These guys just surrounded me, they supported me. We were very, very close, you know, we were great mates, a lot of us, and we loved being together, we loved spending time together. And it does sound like crazy that this, this far down the track we're still mates, but it's a special group, great mates. Mates that you want to be in the trenches with when things don't go right, which I know a bit about. It's just really heartwarming to, to have these guys in your corner. It's coming up to eight years since your diagnosis and, and sadly for all brain cancer sufferers that you, you never get that all clear. How do you feel every time you go back for that four monthly scan? I've learned to control it, not to think about it too much, um, but you can't help it. You just naturally, you just, you know, it's a bit of an unsettling feeling, but I'm not going to whinge about getting scans because there's people out there with brain cancer that they don't need to get scans anymore. So I'm lucky that I can, I'm still fighting along. What was the vision for the Mark Hughes Foundation back in 2014? Ah, we, you know, finding a cure for brain cancer was the vision, it was a big lofty uh, goal. Uh, I remember someone laughing saying, oh, to make any kind of impact, you're going to need to raise um, five to 10 million at least before I'd even raised a cent. And we took it on and the support was overwhelming and we've, we've had momentum ever since and we're, we're kicking goals all over the place. 
Because you could have easily sat back and not done anything about it. You chose when you were fighting the biggest fight of your life to help others. If we sat on the lounge and decided to hope someone else would have done it, I wouldn't be talking about the 20 odd million dollars. I wouldn't be talking about the equipment we've been put in place. I wouldn't be talking about our brain cancer nurses across New South Wales. There's so many things that have happened out of this. As a sportsman, you play for the two points, you win, you lose, and it's all important and amazing stuff, but this is life, you know, this is real. This is um, saving lives, this is helping people. It's been life-changing for so many. It's up to us boys to support him and do what we can to help the foundation as well because every day is closer to a cure, so it's something we can all pull towards and help out with. There's going to be a breakthrough in brain cancer one time or another. I really feel in my gut there's a little bit of magic around the Mark Hughes Foundation. They will be involved in something that cracks the code. I'm going to kick and pull and scream till we find a cure for brain cancer. The stakes are pretty high here. Um, the stakes are high for me and so many others out there. So we've just got to keep working hard and we've got to dig and dig. And you've seen it in other cancers when there's been huge money spent on it. There's, there's so many better outcomes for some cancers now. It's brain cancer's turn. So there's a reasonable crowd in here for the Beanie for Brain Cancer Round. It's all been set up by Matthew Callender and by Mark Hughes. We'll be recognising the research that needs to be improved into brain cancer. 600,000 beanies have been sold since the NRL introduced the uh, Beanie for Brain Cancer Round. How do you feel when you see people walking past with the Mark Hughes Foundation beanie on? It's just overwhelming support, you know. I'll go up to people I don't know and thank them. And it's just one weekend it feels like everyone just comes together and supports our cause and I'm, I just sit back thinking, wow, look at this support, I don't know where to look, who to thank. It's a really overwhelming weekend. Having the players run out with the beanie on is so powerful. What he's done with the foundation, the money they've raised, and the research, it's phenomenal really. He's galvanised the town behind him, probably the whole sport of NRL, and his foundation is a tribute to him. To us all, he's our hero, he's the hero of the town. I'd never class myself as a hero. I'm just a, a good Coalfields boy that hit some bad luck and just decided to stand up and try and find an answer. And then I ended up with all these heroes that want to help me. That's what they're doing. They're helping me and so many others. So they're the real heroes of the Mark Hughes Foundation.